Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to Wings of Intercession Prophetic Prayer Movement. I'm Prophetess Misty Goodwin. We're under the leadership of our pastor, Dr. Russell Antonio Goodwin Sr. Welcome to Midnight Prayer, the prayer of the righteous available. If we are warring, uh, we're in the war room. We're focusing on being aggressive as the adversary is concerning our lives. This week, our focus is on the covenant of marriage. It doesn't matter if you're in your single season or you're you're actually uh, married. Glory to God. I want you to know that marriage does not start when you say I do. Marriage starts in your single seasons by your decisions and your actions and your reactions. And we must understand that the covenant of marriage is sacred before God. It's most holy, the most holy covenant besides our relationship with the Father. Amen. And so God references the covenant of marriage to the reference of his church, his bride. Amen. His love, his condition for the covenant. Glory to God. It will sustain you if you want to be kept. A three-folded cord is not easily broken, but yet we are in a time where cancel culture wants you to cancel your covenant. Glory to God. In your single season or in marriage, glory to God. There are some who would have not been trained or taught the proper etiquette for the kingdom of God. I was one, so I don't have room to judge. But I also know that the prayers of righteous are available. We're going to start with scripture, Mark chapter 10, verse 9. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Hallelujah. So we're praying to, for couples. We're praying for singles. We're praying for God's guidance and wisdom in your marriage, in your single season, in your protection against the forces, against the adversary, against the works of the devil. I'm praying today against the things that will come against the covenant from single to marriage today. Glory to God. And we thank God for each and every one. You make sure you turn on your notifications, subscribe to the channel and Share this prayer with someone that's going through in their marriage. You may save someone's marriage. You may save somebody's life. Glory to your name, Father. In the name of Jesus, we honor you today for who you are, for what you have done, what you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the institution of marriage, the holy matrimony that you have designed through your word, through your word, God. You've given us the ability to overcome the adversity of the adversary. Father, the covenant of marriage is so sacred before you, Lord Jesus. And now in the council culture, they're making popular shacking and living a life uh, being without papers and being without what is what I call legal rights. Rights. When, let me say this quickly before I pray. When you are in your single season and you are courting someone or living with someone and you begin to have children with someone and you have not made it legal, by law, you have no authority if something was to happen to that person. If something was to happen to that person, you don't have any legal rights, nor do that person have legal rights to even decide if you get, were to have an accident, they would not have any legal rights unless you have, hallelujah, unless you have these things in place, hallelujah, unless you have a will, glory to God. And so what we are seeing now, and listen, I was just in a conversation counseling this young lady and she gave me permission to share. Um, her boyfriend was shot and almost killed. Hallelujah. They have been dating for seven years they had two beautiful children. The mother-in-law came. The mother called. I called her mother-in-law, but she's not a mother-in-law because they never did get married. Um, the mother came down and shut off all her rights to even see him in his worst state and condition. She could not, she could not have any access to his bank accounts, no access to any of his things that he had, even with his job. He had no, she had no legal rights. Hallelujah. Yes, her children would get something if something happened, but she had no decision. She had no say in all of those years she's been with this young man. 
So in the midst of this, this young lady, I'm trying to counsel her. She is broke down because she cannot see this man. She cannot even get access to her money where they have a, a, uh, she would give her money into his bank account. And here she is trying to raise two children. Hallelujah. Have no money, have no rights. And here she is struggling with her children, yet money in the bank account. But because of her decision, this is why it's not wise. It's just not wise. And I'm praying that there's some wisdom that rests upon this earth. For those of you who think this is cool, it's not cool when trouble comes. It's not cool when tragedy hits. It's not cool when things, decisions have to be made and you have no legal rights. Glory to God. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we constantly cry out for wisdom for those who are in situations that are not in legal rights. Glory to God through marriage, the covenant of marriage. Lord, I pray that you make it sacred again through the knowledge and understanding of your word through the young people. People and even the old. I pray in the name of Jesus that they will get wisdom and get all they're getting, get an understanding of their legal rights. Glory to God. I pray in the name of Jesus for the covenant of marriage is sacred, God, and for those who are living a life that's not done according to your word, but God, they are stuck. They are bound by their decisions, oh Lord. I pray that they begin to examine the ways that they walk, Father, and lead them and guide them in all truth, the truth that will set them free and keep them free. I pray for singles that are bound through soul ties. Glory to God who are not free to be able to find the one that you have chosen for them because they're bound to yesterday. They're bound to the things that happened to them. They're bound to their pain. They're bound to the insecurities. They're bound to the fear of failing at marriage. God, I pray that you cleanse, wash, and purify their thoughts and they be delivered and set free from all adversity in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for singles, God, the ministry of singleness, that you'll walk them through the process of healing and teach them and train them up to be in an intimate relationship with you, Father, for you are the cord that's not easily broken. You're the strength of the marriage that keeps the marriages together. You have given us the gift of the Holy Spirit that is our counselor, that is our comforter. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that rests upon those that are single who are navigating through this lonely season, but yet they're not alone for you are with them wherever they go. I pray in a, against the spirit of loneliness and sadness and depression and oppression and frustration and anxiety and low self-esteem and lack of knowledge, oh Father, in the name of God, I pray that they will not be the silly women running around wasting their time with the wrong ones, glory to God, and silly men who will waste their time with the foolish woman, the promiscuous woman, the la- one that will lead them astray in the name of God, I pray that you break chains and destroy yokes and annihilate lies on those who are pressing their way to believe, those who desire marriage, God, I pray that you ready them, God, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, that they will not find themselves in desperation. They will not find themselves getting falling short or waiting on your timing, God. But as they wait, they wait in the Lord. They wait on your timing. They wait in the wisdom of God. They wait with the rest uh, assurance that they are worthy of what you have predestined for them. God, I pray as they're waiting, God, they're preparing, God. They're preparing for what it is you have in store for them. Not only are they preparing, they're fulfilling the great commission of Jesus Christ. I pray that you lead them and guide them to what it is you would have them to do, God, in this time and season of their life, that they will not fall into the traps of deception. They will not fall into the traps of deception, but they will walk in the ways of you. Lord, I pray for those who feel a condemned and feel ashamed of their decision, but yet they're stuck in something and don't know how to come out. Father, you said in the time of temptation, you will give them a way of escape. So I thank you, Father God, for giving them the way of escape, God, to lead them and guide them in the way they need to go, that they will never depart in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for leading and guiding them in all truth, the truth that will set them free and and freedom is their portion in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in first Corinthians seven, verse 32, but I want you to be without care. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world and how she can please her husband. And this I say for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for who is 
to prosper, that you may serve the Lord without distraction. So I thank you, Lord God, that we are in our right place and doing the right things in the right seasons. Glory to God. In singleness, glory to God. They become one with you, oh God. They become one with you, God, that you're cleansing, washing, purifying, and purging the heart, the mind, the soul, and the body of all iniquity. God, the Bible says when you sin, uh, when you sin with uh, sexual immorality, glory to God, you, you sin to your body, you sin to your own flesh, you sinning to yourself versus sinning to God. In other words, you are causing damage to your soul when you fall into these traps. And again, I have no heaven or hell to put you in. I'm here to cry out on your behalf because when you continue to lie in foolishness and bondage, the enemy continuously keep you in limbo to fall into the traps of deception that you'll continue to settle for less than God's best. So I pray that the chains break off your heart. I pray for those who are in the wrong relationships. God will deliver you out of them. God will set you free. He will deliver you. You will take the way of escape and the time of temptation. I pray for those whose eyes are blindsided by the works of the devil in the name of Jesus, that their eyes will be wide open to see, to hear, to know and experience God. I pray that in a time that they do not know what to do or say, the Holy Spirit is leading them, guide them in the way they need to go. I pray for those who are doing their due diligence, God, to live a lifestyle pure before you, God, as you purify the mind, heart, and soul, and the body. I pray that they will be found waiting on your timing and that you will not awake love before it is ready. Glory to God for love has a set time, the set time of favor in their life. And I decree and declare that bondage is not their portion. Loneliness is not their portion. Sadness is not their portion. Anxiety is not their portion. Fear is not their portion. Ignorance is not their portion, but they will walk upright before you knowing that they are kings and queens in the kingdom of God, worthy of waiting on you, Father, trusting in relying on your time and glory to God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are doing a quick work in our children and our grandchildren, that they would not be bound in the wrong relationships. God, ready them for marriage, ready them for their families, God, ready them to be the fathers they need to be, mothers they need to be, glory to God, the make they need to be in the name of Jesus. God, and I pray that there will not be any backlash of their resting in you, Father, that they will find joy in this season of waiting on your time and glory to God as they're going through their healing process, break every chain, generational chain, that the divorce is not their portion, glory to God. Oh, being alone all their life, if they desire marriage, God, they will seek after, uh, seek after following you, Father, desiring in you, delighting in you, Father. You promised, you made a vow that you would give them the desires and secret petitions of their heart. So I thank you, Lord Jesus, for new strength coming upon them. Oh, glory to God. Give them ears to hear that they will not entertain the serpent who will try to sway them in the wrong direction or woo them into the lies of deception. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, give them a great the gift of discernment to discern evil. Hallelujah. When good is always present. Glory to God. They will choose to do good. They will live good. Hallelujah. They will walk good. Hallelujah. Trusting and relying on your strength. Glory to God. And I thank you that their faith will not fail them. Glory to God. They will rest in the power of your might for you have give, chosen them to be a good thing in the earth. Glory to God. You said every good and perfect gift comes from God. So as you're perfecting them and preparing them for the role that they have been chosen, Lord, open their eyes that when that person shows up, they will see. When that person shows up, they will hear your voice. And I decree and declare the voice of a stranger. They will not follow. They will not fall into the traps of what they they hear from a person. They'll fall into the knowledge and understanding of what that person actually does. For love is an action and it's an action word. Glory to God. They will see the demonstration of love. Hallelujah. According to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 7, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always have uh, hopes, always perseveres. Let's pray for these marriages to be filled with love, selfless, enduring love in the singleness of their life, trusting and relying that the Lord God Almighty will rest, rule, and abide in their hearts, trusting and believing that their soul is anchored in God, not swayed around in these uh, shipwrecked relationships. Glory to God. 
Deliver them from the bondage of yesterday. Deliver them from John, Judy, and Boo Boo and Hoo Hoo. Those people that have misled them and misguided them, Lord. Empty their hearts of all their X's, Y's, and Z's, God. That you will prepare ye the way of their spouse in the name of Jesus. And as they're ready in themselves, glory to God. Lead them to the place of joy, unspeakable joy. Glory, may the joy of the Lord rest upon them. Glory to God. And in the times of testing, they will not fail the test. They will rest in knowing when the X, Y, or Z tries to return, they will not fall back into the traps of yesterday. And Lord, those who feel comfortable, glory to God, trying to uh, soar their roles and try to figure it out and try to sample, glory to God, without trusting and believing by faith that you know how to begin to orchestrate what it is you have in store for them. I pray, God, that there will be a rest in their spirit. The anxiousness that I come against that, oh, glory to God, the time, time, um, table is ticking. Glory to God. That that time is ticking. Glory to God. I cancel that lie for those who are older and they desire a spouse. Glory to God. That they will not look at that time. Hallelujah. For you are the creator of time. We trust and believe that the timing of you is perfect. Glory to God. So we thank you, Father, for leading them and guiding them in the way they need to go in the timing of you, Father, that you're orchestrating their steps to be ordered by you. Glory to God. Demonstrating the paths that they need to cross the people they need to and I pray for those who believe and believe in God for a spouse that are hung up in the house and just go to church and they're not anywhere for their spouse to find them glory to God but the church and home and school I pray God that you give them a life of balance glory to God that they will be able to find enjoyment in their life find things to do with themselves and date themselves and love themselves and self-care for themselves and honor themselves and honor their body and honor you Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Today, the chains will break. Every generational chain, every foolish chain, every self-righteous chain, every ignorant chain. And I pray for those women who are independent. I pray that you teach them how to be interdependent with you. I pray for them to learn to be submissive in their singleness, God, to serve you all the days of their living, knowing that in serving you, God, you're training them up as the wife that they have been called to be. You're cultivating the wife that they've been called to be. I thank you, Lord, that the wife and the husbands are being ready by you, by the Holy Spirit. The glory to God, they are trained up in the way you need them to go. Even if their, if their father or grandfather failed them, glory to God, the leading of the Holy Spirit. You said you are the father to the fatherless and hope to the hopeless. So help these men to be the fathers that they need to be and the husbands they need to be and the servants they need to be, to be that leading example of respect, honor, appreciation, and value of the very thing you have given a prized position, the gift of God. Hallelujah. The good thing that they have been desert, uh, desiring. I thank you, Lord, that they'll be good to the good thing. Glory to God. And ready for the good thing. Glory to God. Ready to pro, uh, provide, to protect, to lead, and pray for their spouse. Glory God. Uh, equip the wives to be prayerful. Equipped and skilled in prayer. A wailing woman. Hallelujah. Teach her how to pray for her spouse in her single season. I, I challenge you to pray for your spouse daily. You don't need to know him uh, to, to be able to pray for him. You don't need to know her to be able to pray for her because the connection is in the spirit before the natural. So I pray for the spiritual things to be put in place, that you'll be ready, willing, and obedient, that you can eat the good of the marriage. Hallelujah. As you're cultivating, hallelujah, a holy sacrifice, a holy matrimony, glorify God, you are ready. I pray for sexual healing. The deliverance will hit your house today. They deliver you from all perversion. They deliver you from the strong man's and perversion. I pray for the strongholds to come down to be destroyed by fire through the power of the Holy Ghost and you be delivered and set free from the lack and the lack of knowledge, the lack of understanding. Glory to God. I begin to thank you, Father for preparing me, ready in me to be the wife, ready in me to be the husband. Thank you, Lord. You're lining up my life according to your word for my spouse. You are equipping me for everything that spouse needs. And I am all those things and more. I am an asset, not a liability. Begin to pray effectively and not only pray, begin to work your work. Glory. God, I pray for your financial freedom that you will not be, uh, uh, you will be a blessing and not a burden to your spouse. You come to the table 
glory to God, with plenty of things to supply for your spouse. Glory to God. You will not lack anything because you both are one with the Father. Glory to God, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. He will find God so he can find her. She will find God so she she can find, he can find her. Glory to God. And in them finding each other, God shall confirm and affirm and God shall be glorified. And I thank you, Lord God, for deliverance today. For those who are struggling, those who are weary, those who are tired, those that are depressed, those that are lonely, those who are raising their children and and feel weary. I pray for the timing of God. Some of you don't understand that this is the season that you raise up your children, especially if they're in between 12 and 15. That is a very, very delicate season that the Lord God Almighty may want you to spend that time pouring into your child, not saying that your spouse will not come, but understanding that if your child has need of you in that season, the Lord God will wait for that child to be ready for what it is God is doing. So not only do you need to be ready, I pray for your children to be ready, that you make room for your spouse. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank God that you find be found ready, willing and obedient, serving the Lord in the house of the Lord, doing the will of the Father, according to 1 Corinthians 7, 32 through 37. I pray in the name of Jesus that that word be alive in your life. That you'll be like Queen Esther, understanding the time, the waiting period, the preparation season of your life, that you're ready yourself to be submissive unto God so that you can learn to be submissive to your spouse. Listen, I always say this. How can you be okay submitting to a man who's imperfect with you struggling to submit to a man who is perfect in all his ways? When you learn submission with God who is perfect, you'll learn how to be okay to deal with the insecurities and struggles and transgressions of your spouse. So may you be found ready, willing, available to be submissive unto God, that you can be ready, willing, and equipped. Remember, submission is sub to means to support the mission of Jesus Christ. This is the reason why God has chosen you to be the rib, so that you can be ready for the assignment and make sure when you are ready, and when you are equipped that you do not awaken love till it's ready, understanding that it is the timing of God for when he says it's your time, not your when you say it's your time. Wait on the timing of God. Don't go ahead of God. Don't get behind God. Wait on the Father. He knows what's best for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We can learn a lot from those who in other cultures that they, they the Father chooses their spouse for their children. And God, if you allow him. If you allow God to choose, I promise you he's going to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all, you can ask and think according to the power working you. So wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He's getting ready to strengthen your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and hallelujah. If you like to sow prayer seeds over your spouse, you can go to MilwaukeeMovement.org, click the Give button, or cash app the dollar sign, the Movement Center. We love you with the love of the Lord. I'm praying for the singles today. Tomorrow, we're going to continue in the institution of marriage, the covenant of marriage. We're going to pray for marriages all over the world. I pray that you are blessed going in and out of this day. You may need to come and hit this replay when you get weary. But may the Lord God strengthen you wherever you go in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.